Council President, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. How are you? Uh, look, look here. I, you know, two people already in the metropolitan Just two area. People, Derek. Yeah, but that's how it started off in Wuhan, China, with two people. We're in the 70,000. Yeah. Um, let's talk about it, because you've been putting on your. People laugh because I got on a gas mask and plastic gloves. and uh, But you've been putting out on your own Facebook page and off City Council page. Uh, kind of protocol for dealing with this. And yeah, I just thought that, you know, there wasn't enough information getting out. So, of course, I've been sharing that. And I uh, yesterday went to committee on council and talked to, well, I talked to the, the director of council staff as well as our uh, municipal clerk and my own staff, directed my own staff for us to come up with a contingency plan. As you know, as you see in the, some of the Asian countries and others, there may be situations where you have to shut down certain facilities where people oh. can't congregate. So we need to be prepared because I want the council to continue to be able to have committee meetings and council meetings, whether it's remotely or not. But you got to be prepared for that. You can't wait till it happens. And so we're um, I'm pushing protocols on the council side to make sure that we're ready. Uh, Atlanta has the world's busiest yes. airport. Mm -hmm. Over 100 million people travel through there. We have direct flights from China. And from everywhere uh, else. And from all over the world. Italy, we have found that two residents from Atlanta, uh, uh, from the metropolitan mm -hmm. Atlanta, they're just saying Fulton County. I guess they don't want to put the scarlet letter A on them. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, but the other thing too is you once they're now starting to have these community uh, contacts, yeah. it doesn't matter whether they came from another oh, country absolutely. or not. Yeah, well, we see the, the be somebody like you said right. next door. Yeah, right. That's why I'm having on my mask. Okay. Um, I don't want you to be offended if I put it on during the interview. Okay. Okay. I'll been, try not to been, call for sneeze. Well, I'm with you. But on a more serious note, uh, let's go over the council sure. business. The council met on uh, yesterday. Yes, and so one of the pieces that uh, has been reported on and was passed was the moratorium uh, that the mayor issued on the West Side Park. Okay. Tell and, us about or the that, area around we, that in Grove Park. Are, so uh, I represent the largest part of this is was your former council district. I remember when yes. the Bellwood Quarry yes. came. I don't know if that was while I was on council. Yeah. It's so it's interesting. It the is, time over the time ago. that I represented that yeah. area, it was it went from the Bellwood Quarry operating and me going to people's houses, watching yeah. them shake with the quarry. Yeah, when they dynamite people, how I remember those people complaining right. like nobody business. And then we got the quarry shut down. Right. And uh, part of the ideas that I had was like, yeah, we got this big hole. Can we use it for stormwater retention? But in talking with Watershed over the years, we decided, you know, this would be good for a reservoir. So then that happened. Then the next buildup was the belt line came through mm -hmm. there. As a matter of fact, one thing that we did stop, there was at the at the foot of the quarry was land right by the railroad track that they wanted to put a waste transfer station. I remember that. And I was able to fight that back. And so then when the belt line came, then the idea came to make the quarry a park, included right. with uh, the uh, Maddox Park, and make that whole area. And so. As we know, the Beltline everywhere has dramatically changed the real estate uh, in our city. Just gentrified, run the prices. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that's what's happening. Right. And this was a response. Many of the Grove Park neighbors came down complaining about it. The mayor put this moratorium okay. in, and there's certain things that they're supposed to try to do th during this moratorium to try to help alleviate some of the issues. All right, so the park itself, so people know, it would be larger. It would be, be the larger largest than park in the city's mm -hmm. inventory, even larger than Piedmont Park, Much if I larger. remember, about two or three times. Larger. Exactly, exactly. Huge. Yes, so uh, we'll see how this moratorium goes. Yeah. Uh, hopefully it doesn't impact people who are just doing normal business. The Also, the council approved regulations for shareable mobility devices, also known as scooters. Uh, and so they've come up with some new regulations. I believe they're gonna be doing an RFP, reducing the number of companies. But as you have seen over time, mm -hmm that several of them yeah. have left the marketplace. You happy about that because you really don't like these schools. I didn't like, no, no. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, they're okay for fun and right. recreation, but they're dangerous, I think. But they are have mm -hmm. reduced in number. 
the complaints have been reduced since they've been out because they're not blocking the sidewalks. I got you. Uh, How many of y'all done uh, confiscated? Does the city hold them? They they, they, they did, and they were in dispute. They don't give and them still back. in dispute with some companies to wow. pay the fees to get them back. But they are trying to do that. Um, there's also uh, District 3 uh, participated in this uh, new endeavor that Amir Faroki brought to the council on participatory budget. And so he... What is that exactly? Well, I, I've heard of the concept for a long time going through NLC. And um, one of the big proponents was a, a council member named Joe Moore, which is had my father's name, but he's no longer a council member in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And what they would do in Chicago, yeah. each council district received a million dollars to spend in their district to deal with the needs of their district. And so he decided to use a model, which is a European model, mm -hmm. a participatory budget, on how to spend that million dollars. And what they would do is have people come in, come up with projects, vote on those projects, and then he would allocate the money that way. So that So each council district, the twelve council districts, the council person would have basically control of a million dollars. Mm -hmm. Well that's do, in Chicago, not yeah, here. Yeah. <laughs> to do what to to address the immediate small term and the immediate needs of the district. So he came up with this participatory budget. And so what that would affect the million dollar thing. That. Right. So, I, I, so here, Amir wanted to use the concept. Of course, we don't have a million dollars per council district. The concept of participatory budget and doing pilots in districts to see how that would work. And at the end of the budget process, they only gave fifty thousand dollars. And so, District Three is using their fifty thousand dollars to come up 50, with fifty thousand for each council district. Uh, no, it was only for so many council districts. No, no, that ain't just as a trial. I know. You tried it all twelve. Uh, I, I don't have a problem with that necessarily, as long as there's and some. And so he's going to use his, mm -hmm. uh, and he used the process for a community engagement task force that would help connect residents. I believe that what he did it was at one of his town hall meetings. Uh, he discussed okay. three different projects and they voted on that. Yeah, as long as it is done, um, you know, with some barriers around mm -hmm. what you can spend it for, sidewalks. Or some, right. You know, so also, you can't that. build too many sidewalks of 50,000. No. But no also, I'm talking about for a million. Yeah. I think it, you know, if you had a million, I think that's you real, give them real power to the council. I believe so, but. Yeah, but we won't want them to go to jail over it. Okay, them spend next. It on flowers yeah. and sh trips and stuff. But I think, you know, if it's going to help the district. That, okay. Yeah, that's a good incentive. So the next one is also by Mr. Brown that passed, and it's for Honorary Street Sign on um, Griffin Street Northwest between MLK and Boulevard right. and, jo and Jefferson Street, Honorary Ivory Lee Young no, Jr. Jr. Way. Very well, uh, very much uh, appropriate. Look here, we got to take a quick break. We'll come back. We'll come, uh, talk to Council President Felicia Moore. And uh, let her finish running her agenda and tell us what else is happening in this beautiful city that we call Atlanta. We'll be back in a moment. Don't go into place. It's too much truth with Derek Bozeman on News and Talk 1380 WALK. That's uh, Dr. Quasi. Tell me, Dr. Quasi. Is that Quasi? Uh, Paula Cooper Smith says, Hey, Madam President, always good to see you telling the truth. Okay, I need to, uh, I have to have somebody call me at uh, 4 30. I need them to just call back. I think the gaffle is going to be here at um, 5.30. Talk about the weep, weeping time again. Okay. Yeah, you haven't called yet. Okay. I think I gave him the back line mm -hmm. number. NBC News Radio. I'm Tom Roberts. Wall Street is resuming its losing ways due to the COVID-19 coronavirus, with the Dow Jones Industrial mm -hmm. Average down about 800 points today. That despite this move announced by Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell. The Federal Open Market Committee announced a one half percentage point reduction in the target yeah, range. Yeah, I think I'm just give it to bringing that range one to district. one district. Right. No, I think they. The U.S. Death I don't think they. I don't think they gave it to every single district, but they gave it the to a certain number state. just to do a pilot to see how it works. That's what I think. I wouldn't in the pilot. I've been raised all kind of. I know you would. That's right. Emergency. The murder charges against the late POTUS Dulos are being dropped. The Superior Court judge in Connecticut has agreed to the request from the chief state's attorney who filed that motion along with the removal of the gag order prohibiting those involved from speaking about the case. Tom Roberts, NBC News Radio. So have you, um, for the, those of you who are listening to us, 
Have you prepared for the um, to be able to be able to shelter in place in, in the event? I'm just hoping that this is not very well. Well, you know? you know what? For some reason, I have taken it very seriously. No, no. Over the weekend, I was exhausted. I spent all day Saturday and half of a Sunday at the church. And I, you know, if nothing else, I'm not going to starve. <laughs> I do have enough stuff I will eat. No, I'm stuff just, I, if I, I just know, have to you know eat me, it. I'm one of them like, I ain't going to let this stop me. We just have to keep on moving. Let the CDC and all of those who watch. But it's worth watching now. But I think, I didn't feel bad about doing it, whether this gets to that point or not, because you're always supposed to have water yeah, and the things so. that uh, the CDC tells you to get. But I'm prepared. Don't come to my house. I ain't going to let you right. in. There you go. <laughs> I won't let you in. But I'm not surprised it's, you know, Georgia. Well, I, mean, my I thought problem be here faster, thing, to be honest with Well, you. my problem the is, is that all these other countries are very aggressively testing people. We're not testing anybody. So there's a lot of people who be running say, around making here. This up. To try to side tr track his uh, campaign. I got somebody who can Im imitate you exactly. Really? You want him? TJ, do that all right. Come on, do it then, TJ. All right. Come on, TJ. Uh, go on, let's hear Come what on, you got, man. Let's hear stay. what you got. <laughs> All right. 1380 News and Talk Radio. All right. We're going to let you fill in one day with them all. Let's hope it's not for the coronavirus. I know, right? I just think it's going to I think if that's any city that will have a closure, it's probably going to be end up in the matter. Well, we get too many people. Like you said, I just was like, I was just counting the days. How many before it gets to Atlanta, right? Because there's just too many, there's too much going to come. It is. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying I'm, I'm saying, 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 I'm
okay. and how people are dealing with this. I'm on the large cities council, so the, the large city council presidents. But that's like national organization. National. Right? So this is yeah. from most of the large, there's a large and a small cities when I'm right. on the large one. And so that's a big issue in most of the large cities is people with their homes and affordable housing and all that. And that's what we're going to be tackling. So, yeah. What do you find, uh, while I got you, because I always like to educate mm -hmm. our people on city government. Our form of government is a little bit different because right. most people have a city manager now. When you look at well, some South of them do. And yes. you have a mayor, city manager. Do we still have Well, you know what? Actually, council? the city council, if it, I mean, the city government actually has a manager in a pos in position. But the it's, COO. It's, the COO should be, and if you let that operate the way, but that no it mayor should, has allowed exactly, that. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Uh, but what's unique about Atlanta with others? Most of them are, are surprised to hear that as council president that I'm voted citywide. In many instances, because they have city managers and other things, that the uh, governing body, the council members, vote on the president. And I tell them, if that had to happen, I would not be president yeah, no. of the Atlanta City Council. I have to remind <laughs> people, I think you don't the city council president. You wouldn't endorse by a single one of them, would you? Nope. They went with the I endorse moment. you though. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Bowser. Um, but I tell them that I do believe in Atlanta it's important for your president to be elected. Yeah. Uh, because your president, in most cases and in most all cases, would ascend to mayor if something happened with the mayor. Yeah. And I've run across some people that were in our council presidents group who've had to go to mayor. Some of them say, I don't, I want to go back, send me yeah. back. So, you know, you need to make sure that the citizens have some confidence in, in the yeah. second tier of leadership. Because we tell people the council president, I always like to indicate it, have four essential functions. You function as in the absence of the mayor. Yes. Uh, you appoint committee chairs. Yes. You preside over the city council meeting. Right. And you vote uh, in the instance of a tie. That's it. Yes. And they're not really, we've been saying it, but it's, the, I went back to the charter, it's not true. You're not a member of no, any committee, right. yeah, but right. you can go to committees and participate. Uh, can you vote as a, no. you cannot vote in a committee? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So you can go and deliberate and, and probably and as important. a courtesy, you know, but it's your chair ain't going to tell you, no, you can't come have a word. Right. They probably would want me not to come, yeah, but no. that doesn't mean But, that been, you know, but it's important for the council president to have the ability to participate in the committee yeah. meeting because you never know when an issue comes up that you may not have to vote on it. So I try to keep up Maybe as much with yeah. what the council's right. doing. Right. Even though I may or may not have a vote on it, but if that vote comes up, I need to be educated. i got to make a split-second decision. Yeah. Four four eight nine two two seven zero three. So a few other things happened. Mm -hmm. I know that's where you're going. Yep. Uh, there was a resolution authorizing the Atlanta Fulton County Recreation Authority, on behalf of the Stadium Neighborhoods Community Trust Fund Committee, to award grants in amount not to exceed a, a one million for um, over a million dollars for community service projects to Good. benefit the Atlanta neighborhoods. And that, uh, that fund was established as an in, kind of impact fund for right. those neighborhoods around there. Let me ask you, does the state and start still operate with executive director because the mayor was had that job? I don't know who's left. doing what over there. Okay. Right. So I'm going to leave right. that we'll one leave alone. Up. Yes. We'll leave that the next one was a resolution uh, strongly urging CSX to consider the future needs of the city, the Beltline, and the surrounding community as they're in the process of selling Holsey Yard. Now, what is Holsey Yard? What it it was a CSX train yard that has been or is being closed down, mm -hmm. and they're now in the process of selling it. I'm saying, where is it located? Is it part of the Gulch It's project? like it's in East. Okay. No, it's not a part of the Fire. Gulch. Mm -hmm. I don't think, no. Uh, I, I want to... I remember the street, but I can sound the tip of my head. And they're, come they're actually in this uh, their headquarters. I think they're in this building. I think I see that. CSX? Mm -hmm. I uh, also, a uh, resolution on the behalf of the uh, police department for agreement, intergovernment agreement with Georgia State for the purpose of providing food services for employees during the NCAA Final Four. So we're, What is that about? Well, the NCAA, yeah, oh, they're going to be... They're probably going to use some of their facility, too, mm -hmm. I can imagine. And um, then we can also... You, while we on this, can we make well, sure... Well, let me say one okay. more, because I know what you're ready to say. You know I'm going to get ready A resolution to opposing Georgia House Bill 937, which requires local governments 
to regulate building products and construction practices consistent with the code. They're trying to take away the city's ability to have design standards on how people build, what that's they build. Stupid. And so we, that's, we that's said stupid. something in opposition and passed that on the council floor. Now I know what you're gonna ask yeah, me. Make sure you talk to the NCAA so they don't jip people off of their wages before they, you know, that's, that was my main concern because I don't want them to say, look, we didn't know Oh, we, we didn't okay, know so that I, people I will, didn't get paid. Uh, so now that we, because you and I, and I want to again applaud you for uh, helping trying to run the people down after the fact. Because a lot of people did not get done right by the vendors who they got paid. But I, I don't know, you know, you can just send them a little uh, letter in advance to say, I wrote it out. Yeah, um, I'm gonna contact yeah. them, and am I also? Because you know they're gonna sure do some they, of the same old they folks. Not try to use staffing the and you know. That, that, that lady just robbed people. Well, and I'm sure she's probably going under another name. Of course, now. of course. But if they at least know, look, y'all need to monitor for the wages and not uh, let these people wait till you all get out of town. Mm -hmm. You all are paying them. Somebody needs to go. You know, one of the jobs I had before I was on city council was I was the city's uh, Davis Bacon wage rate regulator for the Office mm -hmm. of Contract Compliance. You know what I do? Go on jobs and ask the employees, are they paying you according to the scale that we are paying them? Because these are federal funds, and so mm -hmm. there's a wait, a wage rate, a minimum amount that you must get paid. And it, inevitably, whether it was the city jail, because I worked on that project, the Georgia Dome worked on that project when they were building, these people were not paying folks. And what I could do is send in the proof to the uh, Georgia Department of Labor and those companies either had to pay up immediately or get off the job. Mm -hmm. You can do one or the other. And most of them paid up immediately. So I made um, a note to be proactive and find out who the good contacts are and make sure that we share that. Uh, what else? That's it. That's it. That's it. What, we had a time? lot of proclamations yesterday. Well, you know, so the closer the get to run, okay, the closer get to run for office, you know, you just start. Well, doing then we that. haven't started because that's next year. Well, I know, but you start, you start warming it up. It's okay. Kind of, <laughs> yeah, I call them the uh, city council Grammys. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> best or the city council house best supporting actor, best. Uh, Oh, you got a few more minutes? I'm going to hang around. No, I got time. Okay. Um, I got right, uh, We got a lot of folks on the telephone. I'm uh, Sharon, Leroy, Spencer's on the phone. You got questions for the council president. And, um, you know, and uh, we'll see what else is on the agenda, what's coming up. We got all kinds of races, people qualifying. And here and there, and I'm sure the city council, it makes a difference who's sitting in those seats. Yeah, and so while they're dealing with, with presidential them. and partisan, Next year will be city council election. You all will qualify. When is qualifying for city council? It probably will be around August of August. next year. Because yeah. in November, it's, it's next. It's in November 2021. November. There you go. All right, uh, 448-922-703. Please have your question ready, and uh, we'll be uh, right back to go straight to the phones. It's Too Much Truth with Derek Bolton. I'm News and Talk, 1380 WALK. Too, too much truth. Call us at 404 922 okay. on News and Talk 1380. W-A-O-K. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. Big trouble on the north side in DeKalb County with a crash on 285 eastbound near Buford Highway. Looks like that's blocking two of your left lanes. You may want to use Georgia 400 southbound. Not the right side. I know. And we're still backed up over on the west side of town, 285 southbound. Looks like they're about to clear this crash. I can deal with that 60 degree weather. I uh, know, I was in the house earlier. I like last night was cold, but by the time I got out, I'm like, this house is hot. Temperature had gone up. We're getting the backside effects of that Nashville temp tornado. Mm -hmm. That thing tore up Nashville. I see. I and talked to some of my oh, friends. Right. I meant to find out about my cousin. I meant to ask if he's all right, because he's in Nashville. Let me check. Yeah, you I'm here with my friend Teddy Aston, and he's helped so many people I know with loan modifications and foreclosure prevention. And I said, Teddy, I got to get you in front of my listeners and talk to us about loan modification and foreclosure prevention. Well, if you had a change of income, Rashad, 
Two income reduced to one. The loss of a loved one that's contributing to the household expenses. Divorce or separation, even if you had to file bankruptcy. Medical hardship to make a cost of financial hardship. Yeah, this is going to be real interesting. What's the real benefit? Like dropping my flag, man. Look, get out the way and let the real people, let the real contenders run. You can only go so far. Okay, this is TLA Real So why did that? Might be the tell of the tape now. They let Bernie come on in and win. Well, my, my he said the establishment gets dirty. Where's the end, Bernie? You talking about revolution? Uh, look here, I'm going to feel the burn. I'm with Bernie. You so, with Bernie? Bernie. 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 Oh, the Biden is... The only thing... The gaps, the gaps. Yeah. But this medication for all is kind of... Well, he'll back off. I mean, he's not... He's going to back off. He can't. You, one, you got to see what you get done. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Again. Oh, look what's happening. Yes, man. How you doing? Oh, how are you? I know. Great job yesterday. That well, was thank awesome. you. That was awesome. Mm -hmm. We proclaimed everybody oh, yesterday. Yes, how are you feeling yes, more? Mm -hmm. Hey, nice to this meet is Quaylen Bobby. He is a young Morehouse grad. Yeah. He comes in and he works on his voice with me and he works with the Better Business Bureau. There you go. So I let him, he, he does the um, public service announcements for the Better Business Bureau. That's how they get. We on live. So they can oh, we're live? Yeah. Hey, everybody. <laughs> it's Maria Boynton here, the news director. Director and Public Affairs Director, and this young man is Quaylen Bobbitt, a recent graduate of Morehouse College. And what he does, he works with the Better Business Bureau. He comes in and he does public service announcements for me that I then put on our different radio stations. Wonderful. So I right listen for your voice. Say something. That's right. Say something. Hi, my name is Quaylen Bobbitt, and you're looking at. So basically, he's in here today cutting some coronavirus scam PSAs for us. He's also doing a series on being fiscally responsible for this year. He's talking about credit cards so you, you and all talk that. talk to Mr. Bones when bringing in his... Uh his mask. I just remember who you were, man. You, uh, yeah. you, I sent you out to David Bowman for yep. an intern. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that's, that's been, what, a couple yeah. years now? Nah, that was over the summer. Oh, that was, was over, over the summer. summer. Yeah. Yeah, 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 you yeah. got it all graded up. Like, okay. And then recently, you went to another one of the Davis Bowman events. You were at the one talking about the sex trafficking. Um, yeah, man, I'll be everywhere. I'll be everywhere. Good to see you. He wanted to come in and say you. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Let's put the mask back on. I don't know whether you're real or getting out of town. He says London. She had me in Selma. Oh, you get to London. Hold on. Here. I was in Selma, and it was a lot of people in Selma. Yeah, yeah. Let me put the mask back on until y'all get out My of here. My mama sent me a picture. I was like, ooh, boy. It was deep. Because I emceed the D9. Yeah. Oh, 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 wonderful. It was deep. Oh, wow. Turn around. Turn. <laughs> okay, y'all. Thank you. Well, All right, see you. Right. All right. Well, stay, uh, stay in touch with me, man. Absolutely. We got to catch up. I like that off necklace. Thank you. With Derek Bowman on News and Talk 1380 WAOK. Call us at 404-892-2703 on News and Talk 1380 WAOK. Okay. Okay. You want some disrespect in my Yeah, he said. He just came in from London. I got some hand sanitizer because I was trying to. Yeah, I was trying to. You see, I'm jumping to the head, dude. Y'all need to stop. Yeah, when your arm falls off tomorrow, don't say that. That is not a secret. Yeah, that's what happens with money. You got here and then you got right outside the door. Ooh, Lord. See, you got TJ. I know you look here. You have TJ. Man, please. I just, I look, I look, I they, they send me over to these. Let me stop talking. Appreciate it. Machine on. <laughs> All right, welcome back to News and Talk 1380 WLK. Good to see you. Young man who came in. I'm trying to see where I met him. He went and I sent him to David Bowman oh, law firm. And uh, yeah, and uh, so Ooh. anyway, he was from London, so we had to put our mask. No, but he was not from London. <laughs> yeah, he been to London. Yeah, that no. was the young man that came. I know he, he just came from London. Three. 
from Morehouse. Yeah, he did. that's yes, right. Is that exactly. soap? They done gave you, they done, they done give her a towel. Soap. They done gave you soap. They done gave y'all the wrong <laughs> thing. was soap. Ain't your hands. We're trying to sanitize. I'm going to use this. Let me just put the glove white. back on. I'll use this one. And um, there you go. Ain't that soap? It, look, he done gave, he done, that, that's a, a soap is <laughs> mess. But it, it kills all kinds of, look, let's go to our phones. All these people got questions for the council president. Let's okay. go to, let's go to uh, Sharon in the ATL. Sharon, how are you? Doing very well. You got a question coming for Council President? I'm doing fine cracking up at Derek Bozeman. <laughs> yes, ma'am. No, you have to file the claim as you do. The law department has to do their due diligence. Once they determine it's unfavorable, or mostly, then if you really don't agree with that, you can ask your council member to get involved. And sometimes they're able to help um, change their mind on the claim. So, I mean, but typically that does not happen. It's a pretty rare Karen. Mm -hmm. But it's always, but you know, I would just say as a former councilman, it is always good to get your council person because they really your front line defense. Because you can, the city law department is looking at it, and of course, if you know they get hundreds and probably thousands of these claims, but sometimes yours get lost in the just the general practice of how it's done. And you may have a very legitimate claim, but the city has what is called sovereign immunity. Oh. Is that unless there's some gross negligence or uh, on the city part. They won't pay it, and I don't blame them, because if they had city paid every claim they received, it would literally be broke. But, yeah, it's always good to... Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. There you go. You don't just know. We're trying to help out a little bit. Let's go up to Spencer in College Town. Spencer, you're on with Council President Moore. How are you? Dr. Bell one. Yes, sir. Best day of my life. It sure is. You woke up this morning, didn't you? Yes, I did. All right, Principal. What's good? I, I'm so elated to hear our council president, Miss Felicia, uh, talking about an area I used to play in as a as a child. We called it Rock Canyon. We didn't know that it was a, a granite um, a quarry. Yeah, quarry. Yes, but. To hear that it's going to be renewed because we used to go down there and swim in the water that had settled in the area that they dug out. And we'd walk along on what we call the sewer pipe to the, to the canyon. And to hear that there's some talk about whether it's going to be redone or not, I, I hope I live long enough to see. But, Miss Moore, uh, I, I appreciate your service to our city as a Grady baby. Um, I thank you for everything you've done for us and the trying to do for us. So... I want to go play in that park again. <laughs> and um, was, my mother came down there one time to get me out of there because we were down there swimming in the, in the pool of water that was there. And um, it was some boys and girls from the neighborhood. And some of the girls, were, they were dressed kind of probably but <laughs> all right now you go right, way Spencer. back in those memories <laughs> right, thank you Spencer um, but uh, it, it's going to become a reservoir and the area around it's going to be a park so you can come back and reminisce there you go Four four eight nine two two seven zero three. And I think uh, the scene from uh, Black Panther was filmed there wasn't yeah, it? There's, yeah there's a, a Walking Dead's been filmed there a lot yeah. of films have oh, been there the, the uh uh, scene with uh, T'Challa and them get into the fight is actually mm -hmm. yeah. uh, let's go to uh, Leroy y'all with Council President Moore Leroy how are you what's going on DB I'm, I'm right you don't need to call him to the Council President come up to do Leroy. 
Yeah, I missed the last time. You know, y'all changed the schedule on me. Y'all didn't send out the memo. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, she's here, Leroy. Uh, shoot your shot. What's going on, Council President? Hello, Leroy. Uh, I, I, well, I want to talk a little more trash with you if you can handle it. I can handle um, whatever you got to throw at. <laughs> All right, so um, uh, three individuals in our neighborhood sought to try and remain in the city of Atlanta. Interesting enough, uh, they were represented by Robbie Ash. Uh, he's not a city attorney, but he is paid um, by the city to do different things. Yes, he's an outside counsel on the issues uh, related to South Fulton. Oh, okay, so so it is legal for uh, a city, a municipality, to represent citizens that are not citizens of that same city? Is that well, the question is whether he's representing the city's position in it or if he's representing those individuals. I would I would say that he should be representing the city if the city is paying him. If those three individuals are paying him, then he should be representing them. Yes, and key word in what you said is him. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, um, at but the result of the case, uh, Weingarten ruled in the in favor of the city of South Florida. So I'm just, you know, I'm just wondering when, when can we get these trash cans picked up? Or well, um, that's a good question. For an appeal. And I'm glad you mentioned that. I just had a meeting. Uh, I have a regular meeting with the deputy city attorney, and, and I forgot that to put that on my list. And I know people in Lock Loman is what you're referring to that the city is still providing solid waste services and police services and we were waiting as i understood it it's more of an administrative directive that they kept administration or the mayor's office directive that we keep providing those services while this lawsuit was out there now that it's over i would assuming that they would end the practice but you're telling me that it has not ended no, trash trucks still coming through the neighborhood, and, you know, since I still do pay taxes in Atlanta for other properties, you know, I like my tax money to go to where it can be used for now something. Let, well, let me ask you this. Is that if you say now it's been settled, um, is the city of South Fulton going to pick your stuff up? Why, they, why don't they talk I think you? they get city of South Fulton pick up and the city of Atlanta's doing it. Uh, so, you get uh, both? Yeah. Well, actually, I'm doing neither. I'm not paying. I, I paid City of Atlanta for a service I never used, and I haven't signed up with City of South Fort. No, you just want to, you don't want to pay for nothing. That's your problem. You just don't want to pay for nothing, big bro. That's the problem. But the other part no, of it. I pay to get the. Hey, look, I take out my own trash. Oh, uh -huh, yeah. That, that ain't an option when you're in the city, though, buddy. You need to pick one, two side now. Well, Leroy, what I'm going to do is I've made a note of it. I'm going to follow up on that because I, when I heard that the case uh, was uh, already decided, I would assume that we had stopped. Obviously, we haven't. And that's an issue because right. some people may not pay it because they don't, they're not yeah, in the city. I, I don't and so the city's I just wasting wait. money. The day that they the yes. court settle it, unless there's an appeal, but the appeal has not been and filed. May, and that may be what they That's probably they're gonna what say. they're going to do. But I just but think for it's the ridiculous. time that they're not appealing it. But all right, Leroy, you just get on somebody's tab about that now. So we don't say you try to, <laughs> you've done engage in theft of services. <laughs> oh, no, sir. Okay. Uh, I'm, I took out my trash. All right. Me. All right, dog. All right, y'all Y'all be good. Mm -hmm. Y'all look around Leroy's house. <laughs> just throwing it out the car down the street. Don't say that. I'm just kidding. I'm very conscientious again. You know, how many how many houses involved with this? I don't know how many's in there. Yeah, probably many. about five hundred or less. Probably, yeah. I would assume. They just said, let the people go. Um, as your time up, you got some more time. Huh? I've got to five thirty. Okay. All right. Look, you got you got questions for the council president about any other goings on in the city? She can answer. Four four eight nine two two seven zero three. We'll be back in a moment. It's too much truth with Derek Bozeman on News and Talk thirteen eighty W A O K. Oh, he's been fighting them for a minute. You hear me? We want out of that place. Turn it up, what they saying? How many now got the virus? Uh, 
Radio. I'm Tom Roberts. After a one-day reprieve, it's back to big losses on Wall Street today. The Dow Jones Industrial Average slumped 786 points. That despite a move by the Federal Reserve to cut a key interest rate by a half percent in response to expected hits to the economy by the coronavirus outbreak. Fed Chairman Jerome Powell. My comments are too. How you been preparing you besides praying? Man, look, I, I'm, I'm, see, I'm hoping it ain't going to get that bad. You know what I'm saying? I'm hoping it's not either. Not but I, I am just knowing in Atlanta. They said that the diagnosis over in China where it supposedly started is yeah. beginning to drop off. Yeah. So a lot of people yeah. are thinking that it's going to be a seasonal right. thing and eventually like convert into the flu. Yeah. Yeah. Which I don't get that, and you know, I don't take a flu shot, but I don't catch the flu. Knock on wood, I might get a cold, but I do elderberry and uh, black seed oil. Like the sign of I've been, the I've been eating some of that black seed oil. Oh, I mean, not eating it, but you know, taking the capsules. Dude, it's the best. I mean, I've never seen anything quite like it in terms of stopping a cold. If I feel a cold coming on, if I take the elderberry and mix it in the black seed oil together. And take a shot it of knocks it right. I, I take about two or three times a day. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Uh, up at Nature's Own, my health food lady, she has the elderberry. There's two different ones. The extract, which tastes like alcohol, and she got a very thick cough syrup, mm -hmm. and that's the one that works. Mm. And the extract will have you feel a little bit loopy. It's, it's almost like a, it's, it's alcohol based, tastes like it. But the elderberry uh, is kind of bitter and sweet. And then it helps you take the black seed off. And the black seed off can be very slick and greasy and just don't taste good. You mix the two together. I take about a big spoonful of that three times a day, morning, evening, and at night. It knocks it right out. What's that? What is that? We're talking about cold for cold and mm -hmm. and elderberry, sir, and uh, black seagull. Mm -hmm. The cough syrup costs cost about $38 thing, but it is, um, it's a great, uh, it works for me. After about two days, all of a sudden, it's all. Oh, let me call my, let me call my Tennessee people. 19 people dead. From what? Coronavirus? No, no, from the uh, tornado in Nashville. Oh. I'm about to be like, shoot, man. Hmm. Any questions for me? No, no questions so far. Hey, this is Jared Colson. Whenever I'm feeling stressed and strained, I go see my people at Sparlin Healthcare. Sparlin Healthcare has been in our community more than 65 years. Located at 923. Okay, nobody asked if this is surface cleaning. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I thought, okay, I like that's why I didn't grab those yeah. wipes because I was like, it's probably yeah. surface cleaning wipes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those are not hand wipes. I mean, it's, it's, I guess it's seven. Y'all have testing. Right outside the door. The CDC say that hand washing. Oh, man, I'm, you, you know, know I'm very, special. look, I'm the one way to I'm stay away. I ain't a germaphobe, uh, but even when I touch my, I don't touch, no, I open it with my shoulder. When I come out of the restroom, I pick my shirt up and yeah, open it. Yeah, I'm like that, too. Are you that? Buttons with yeah, knuckles. No, right. But the, the main thing is, and it's the biggest habit that people have, it's, it's it, hard to break. Yeah, it's the it not to, to touch your face. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah. Well, the good thing about when you wear glasses, then you can't. You know, mm -hmm. your eyes is, is definitely, but, um, and then I, mean, I had to keep just, I mean, cleaning just, off things. You, know, you have to, you just deal with too many people when you think about it. I don't, I don't think you can avoid mm -hmm. something like Let me that. Let me tell you, I'd be like, you know, when we go out, I have to always tell the staff here, make sure, bring me some sanitizer. We had the homeless shelter, and you don't want to be offensive, right? But look, shit. But you have to. Man. As a matter of fact, I was thinking, uh, you know, that's a concern, too, well, you because know, that population. You know, the NBA told them people to stop signing the autograph, don't accept anything from uh, fans, don't let the fans, you know how they going in the tunnel? Doing the high five. I said, don't do that. They came out with a whole protocol 
or what not to do. And some of them have said, I'm a, and it's going to come off very snobbish, right? So don't accept pens to sign with from people. And so some of them have already said we're going to just stop giving autographs. But, you know, it's just, that? while people trying to come together, now we're oh, having things definitely. that make us I mean, we're definitely headed there. You know, it's like when HIV was first kind of on the scene. You like, uh, uh no, we don't want you to. Yeah, my mama, me she don't want. I told her to get some water, whatever. But you gonna do something for me? I'm like, well, what I gonna do for you? She said, I need you to quit going to all these meetings with all these people. I'm like, mama, that's not <laughs> Well, you know that's what they said over there that they're counseling meetings. They they're talking about counseling large meetings. Like sporting events, or, I mean, it could get that well, bad. Well, someone they having yeah. them play soccer yeah. overseas, yeah, and say. nobody yeah. in the stands. Yeah. And that you know that's unusual because they be in the stand by hundred thousand. Well, I know the final four is nervous. Yeah, but you know us, we don't need to do that. Hopefully, it yeah, might be the whole Olympics in the middle. Yeah, well, then now they might need to now. Well, the Olympics is a whole other situation. Right. They're they saying they're going to try to make a decision. I'm like, yeah. how do you make a decision? Atlanta need to get ready. We got all of the venues from 96. Come on. Take it. <laughs> Come on. Bring on back to the city. <laughs> Maybe that's why they were having that race this weekend. Yeah. All over the city. Well, I got to ask you about that, Those too. trials. All right. We've been talking off camera. They, you know, they, they laughed at me because I got my gloves and my mask and stuff. The council president, she's serious about this uh, coronavirus. And we just well, you know, she, and I was joking with him earlier when the Zika virus came. Yeah, and I was uh, one that was pushing and to get clean up, to tire down to whatever. And I ain't going to even repeat what you said. That was ridiculous. But my point is, I do get, uh, it does get my attention because whether it's this or something else, eventually, yeah. we have to be prepared. And yeah. being prepared is something you can always push on the back. Yeah, Felicia says she got a stockpile of beans and water and stuff down <laughs> in her fall <laughs> out she <laughs> I said, look here, if we get that bad, I don't want to be the last one surviving anyway. I'm okay, just think of the scenario. You. If yeah. the scenario Certainly. is that people have to shelter in place, yeah. then you can't go run no, to the store. No, and I don't want to run to the store yeah. with everybody I'm at like, the store. I ain't never had to do that. Now I think, you know, it's, it's always being prepared. You have to always be prepared. Yeah, so I, I wanted to get ahead of the lines because they're starting yeah. in other places where people are clearing shelves. No, you cannot find any hand sanitizer. You can't find any masks. You can't find too many of these Clorox wipes. And that's why I got my good old trusty army T -T mask that I'm about to wear. And let me know if you got to go to any large meeting. You can borrow this. Take with you now. I'll, okay. I'll clean it out with alcohol. Let you take wear this to your next MPU meeting. I don't think so. <laughs> It doesn't yeah, match. Doesn't <laughs> match with my look attire. At, give me your look, uh, navy green outfit. What is that? And that council meeting. Cause y'all be sending a lot of people. Y'all have two, three hundred people down there. You know what? These people that come out of town, what they come from. Okay. Uh, what else is exciting on the horizon? What else is the, uh, the council up to? Well, the next thing, uh, the big on the horizon for the council is we're getting into budget season. So now. Departments should begin to start talking about the budget process. Tell us a little bit about the city finance. Are we in as good a shape as it's You know, right? as a council member and one that was a longtime finance chair and member, I was more attuned to what's going on. What I did tell the chair of finance in our chair's meeting, where is the five-year plan? Because that's supposed to precede the budget. That was legislation I put in years ago, and I, I cautioned them when they get it to be very diligent about looking at how we're projecting spending for the next five years because we've added a lot of expenses. We increase our firefighters for, yeah. and the police officers. And people, that's what we call sunk costs. Right. That is not a one-time deal. That remains in the budget in perpetuity. Right, and so it's a great thing to do. And the reason it hadn't been done the way that we did yeah, it so is because you're being more cautious about how that racks up over time. But now that we've done it, we need to make sure we can take care of that. You have to think about what's happening in the economy certainly, and a looming certainly recession. Certainly slowing down. We clearly see that. The state asked for a 5% across the board cut for mm -hmm. this year's budget. Mm -hmm. And I don't even know if they've uh, reached an No, they're an battling agreement. it out. Yeah, they haven't reached agreement on the budget. So if the governor, because, you know, obviously the governor even got some great uh, uh, economic forecasts. Mm -hmm. he, he sees what's there. coming down yeah, the line. And and he so don't he want when he gets to run said, for office oh, absolutely. for everything to have, have, have tracks. And so the city would do well 
to uh, follow the trend. It's time to uh, tighten up the tighten your belt up a little bit because uh, people, when they start experiencing hardship, you got layoffs, job mm -hmm. cuts, uh, shrinking, right sizing mm -hmm. the government. Uh, you don't want to be caught Cutting out here with services. a you know, new Cadillac and new house and all that. <laughs> and they tell you you can no longer work for the hour. We only need you thirty. Um, you know, but clearly we're headed to some economic uh, uh, right. Slow instability down. and slowdown. Right. And particularly with this virus as well, oh, and yeah. it certainly hurt, hurt the yeah. Wall Street and those markets, well, which translates into just yeah, regular... We know for the other thing, you know, we, we knew what 9-11 did. Mm -hmm. The city's budget plummeted. Mm -hmm. uh, I think when I left in 2004, 2005, we were at 700 million mm -hmm. then. Mm -hmm. You all just got back to about 700 right. million. So 2009 was when we just finally got out of the recession. And so when uh, Mayor Reed came in and we had instituted a lot of things, made a lot of cuts, then that's when we were in the feast. I think we're about to go in the famine again. It's just a cycle. Yeah, it's a cycle. Uh, we'll come back. What about pension? I'm running into a lot of uh, uh, retirees. Well, we just had an audit had done, an okay. audit, and it's not good. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, I think the administration of it as well as some of the investments. Well, I'm talking about the unfunded pension liability when they did the pension reform. Right. We're waiting on the actuarial study to see where we are. I anticipate that we'll probably have, We always, when we get these reviews, end up not having good luck. Just like we just had one that came in yesterday from WorkSource Atlanta. Not good. Yeah. Well, We're going to have to send more money. Cause We're going to send more money back to the family. Can, can you? Uh, can you explain, because uh, I was just with Rob Pitts, we were in his office, I was over there visiting another commission. We laughed about his city council days. Um, can you uh, tell us, is the fund just that difficult to administer or we just ain't got the right people? Because it's the same essential, this is kind of the same fund. There's too much truth do. if I tell you what I really think. Okay, yeah, we, we want you to do it. Okay. This has been a problem for a number of years. And so it's I'm a saying problem maybe we it is very have. difficult that we should or should not. Should not have. We need to be able money. to give people jobs. Can the money, be, can it be really as difficult as it, it appears that it is? Some people do it well. Okay. All right, we'll come back. We'll let Felicia Moore talk about that, and uh, we'll let her get out of here. Because, I, you know, summer is coming. All I think about is, you know, when I was growing up, I had that good old Cedar job, mm -hmm. summer lunch, fixing summer lunches. And I think about all of the young people. That pre took pressure off my mom and dad because I could mm -hmm. go buy my own clothes. And that little $200 uh, every two weeks or whatever mm -hmm. it turned out to be was very uh, much needed. And I enjoyed working for it. And so I just look, if we put it all in the summer work program or something, it looked like that should be pretty easy to track and follow. You think? All right, 448 is her last segment. If you got any questions about what's happening in the city, uh, you know, our council president is here, 404. Don't wait till I'm gone. Two, two, seven, zero, three. That's what they do. And then when you leave, I'll start cussing when she hear I'm nice. Uh, we'll be back. It's News to Talk 1380 WALK. Any questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And some new trouble on the west side of Car Fire 35 northbound. Right now, we're going to have to do this. We're going to have some big time pads for folks traveling northbound who are already dealing with that southbound problem. Looks like they just cleared this crash 285 south here. How long did it take? So you have uh, Craig Sams. You know, familiar with Craig Sams? He uh, he said it was an honor to meet you in person. I'm now living in College Park and um, also connected with NAMI GA, NAMI Georgia, and the branch that I am with is NAMI Atlanta Auburn. And basically, what he wants is. Um, he wants to wants you to give your thoughts about the treatment of those who suffer from mental illness. Wow, um, I just think that we don't have enough opportunities or places for treatment. Many of our, you know, we were just talking about people with our homes on the street suffer from some mental illness, and if they don't, they will. If you have to live out there on those streets, it's understandable. Um, that is something that we really gotta get the state to pay more attention to and put more funding to, and of course, federal funds as well, 
So I just don't think that we have enough facilities or opportunities for people to get the help that they need. Do you want to learn how to get started making money flipping houses while you're in Atlanta? If so, we have an amazing opportunity for you. We're like I was doing that uh, homeless outreach with uh, Marshall Brassett. Oh, yeah. I got to call him. I got to have him on the show. Yeah. I, I, I'm trying to work with him. He needs a vehicle. Uh, he needs a van, a passenger van. Because he's using his car, his personal mm. car. And half of the car he's got filled with supplies. So when he's trying to transport people to like the warming centers and stuff, um, he can't do it. You have to tell me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, so we can try to get him. So he can have but uh, one of the things that occurred to me after we went around to three or four different stops, and I said to myself, you know, I know many of the people have mental illness, but after I looked at how they were dealing with to live on the street, I'm like, I would have mental illness Look, if I had to stay to on the street. For survival, man. I tell people, you know, that it's, is it's a the rough cold life. days and it's when it's raining. Now, I don't even like to walk from the car to the house when it's raining. But what about those who don't have any choice? I mean, they have made a way, and you'd be surprised. Some of these people are working, other working for them. Well, I ran into a woman who was in a car. Working every day, uh, living out of cars. And she said she had to choose between paying her car now yeah. or having a place to stay. She decided to live in her car. Yeah, and because she needed to get to work. Mm -hmm. yeah. But there's a car lot in, was it Columbus or one of them, say, Macon, mm -hmm. where the car dealerships say, at night, you all can come and park in the dealership oh, lot. that's good. You that's know, nice. and not have to try to find your way around, mm -hmm. you know. Because so, it's hard you know, sometimes. Some of these lots have security and they run right, people right. off. Well, remind me before we get out here. All right. We're talking all things city government. You know, we love Atlanta. You know, sometimes I come off hard on it, but I think Atlanta has good leadership for the most part. I think the city council uh, all work very hard. We have some intractable issues like homelessness, uh, mental illness, um, you know, uh, how do we deal with this gentrification that is running rampant, but it's not just happening in Atlanta. It is happening all across the nation. Uh, it's simply exploding here because we also have a income inequality. Exactly. Um, the largest in the nation. And that's why the Workforce Development Agency is important that we get it right. I think for me, over the time that I've been on council, it's always been problems. I think yeah. one is political interference a lot of times. That What does that mean? What I mean is for people to require, request, Job. conjole, or, or work around the issues related to the regulations to this money. Right. Then we get dinged when, we, when they do the audits, and then they ask for the money back, or we don't have the people in place who know the regulations and they're not following the regulations, yeah. and that's basically it. Yeah, I, right. I think it's just training. I can tell you, uh, and that's why I was glad I worked in city government before I was elected, because I'll tell you about Davis Bacon. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I started that when I was a college intern. Nobody wanted to do it because the paperwork was just too tedious. Mm -hmm. And because I was a college student and could do it real quick and real fast, and you got to sign off on it, mm -hmm. and everything got to be filled out just right. Uh, I worked with Jim Culp. I don't know if you remember Jim back way back then. Yep. And uh, um, Lonnie Sabor was kind of working mm -hmm. with us. Uh, and, uh, and so the three of us together, Randy, uh, a little loan fund program because they had to come to us for certain sign off. I had to go monitor the pro project. Uh, the uh, build it was called the, the BILF program, the mm -hmm. Building Improvement Loan Fund. Did mm -hmm. you still have that fund? I don't know if we said I haven't heard of it. B I L F. I've heard so of it before. If you open your business, you were twenty, thirty thousand dollars short. The, mm -hmm. We would give you the money, and then you pay. You know, Antonio Brown just pr approved a business. For to help people, yeah, but that's it was a great Similar thing because I can tell you Chantrell use it and Q yeah, oh no, that one that fund is still of, there. Mm -hmm. A bunch of those kind of restaurants use it and barber shops and different stuff. Um, and you know, it was a great, great uh, program, but it the paperwork was so tedious. Um, you know, then the Department of Labor folks had to come in and audit it and look over, it, make sure it was filled out. 
And so, uh, you know, that... that I mean, if you accept the money from the federal yeah, government, you, you accept the strings that go along with oh, it. Certainly. So do what it says you can do. Don't do what it says you, you can't, can't do. <laughs> and this is that simple right. to me. Because uh, they definitely come to audit. And their people come know what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. And they just start pulling files. And they would do that in contract compliance. They just show up one day and say, where's your file? Mm -hmm. And I had to keep the file straight. If somebody went in there and gets it. It was, I'm telling you, it was tedious. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but it was, it, it was a good time. Um, what else y'all got? Y'all got, uh, y'all got some outdoor, I saw the council announcing some, uh, I don't know if it's y'all's, uh, uh, meetings. Y'all got a number of outside meetings or something I was reading about. I don't know whether it's, uh, community meetings. It kind of came up on my Facebook as a, a caption. you remember posting uh, anything about some city meeting? I don't know. I know y'all give me Well, I do know I had some meetings, uh, that were listed here. So let me give you those. I don't know if they're the ones you referring to some upcoming meetings <clears throat> that's like a town hall on march 12th uh i guess it's a work session on development impact fee advisory committee right and then march 20th this was a biggie the tree ordinance rewrite 10 a.m in council chambers March 20th. And they want to make it more stringent than what it is. Exactly. Trying oh, to save the tree canopy. The tree huggers or something else. And then March 24th, notice of sales and use tax election. I'm not quite sure. Oh, that's the, is that the most? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes, and so that, is, that, that is on the ballot. Okay. That is uh, on the ballot. I, I did receive some information about that. Tell us about the municipal option sales, sales tax. tax. Right. And they are saying that they're using it for... Water, water and sewer, sewer projects and so what that has done traditionally we passed that to keep the water rates low because it's based on sales tax it's a one percent sales tax and that money goes into the water sewer fund exactly and, and it's for capital projects it was initially for consent decree but now it's whatever's left in the consent decree and other infrastructure. We have completed this consent decree. That started. Back I, in I would hope so, but I think I think we're still working years. on some of the pieces. Okay. You know, it's a, it's a big it was a big consent. Billions of dollars. Yeah. So this is to keep your water rates low, and you know we already have. Y'all had said much amount. about that. Well, much. and that's what I said when they were announcing yesterday about it. I said, make sure you explain yeah, what it is or whatever. Y'all better come down here to this station and tell Just people. vote yes, Mr. Bowles. Oh, I'm going to vote yes. I understand. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to vote yes and we'll encourage others, but I didn't. And vote no if you right. don't. I just, saw, I, I just remember seeing it on uh, my water bill. In fact, I just owe my water bill this, mm -hmm. this morning. Uh, so, so it will be yeah. on your ballot when you go to vote. I know some people are early voting, so they may or may not know. And I'm not early voting because we don't know who's going to actually be on the ballot by the time it gets to Georgia. Well, you know who you, who, who you want. I have to still not. The you uh, some the of the people that I like or was looking at because I've vacillated yeah. are not in the race. So yeah. we'll see. You're just going to vote for Biden. The mayor's supporting him. You just need to follow the lead. Okay. <laughs> if I vote for him, it would be because I decided to. It would be the old oh, base on hey, your man is traveling all around the country with me. You need yes, to just follow is. her lead on me. That's what you need to do. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bozeman, for your advice. <laughs> I guess nobody wanted to talk to me today. Oh, uh, look, they, look, you explained everything so perfectly. Well, good. I'm glad I did that. Uh, tell everybody how they can reach your social sure, media sure. in your office. Oh, let me, I meant to ask you, how did your. Uh, was it the Facebook conversation? conversation? Yes, yeah. it went well. We had people call in. I, I felt like I was on a radio station. We had yeah. them on the, the speaker phone, and we'll do more of those. People ask all kinds of questions. But uh, you can reach me. I'm very accessible. Yes, My office is. number, area code 404-330-6052. Give that again very slowly. 404, of course, and 330 -6052. 6052 you can reach me by phone you can reach me by facebook i'm always on facebook uh felicia moore atlanta city council president if you like and join that page you will see all of these things you get notices more probably than you probably get tired of seeing me on your news feed because um tj is very good at keeping up with the committee notices right. i post a lot of articles that i read i'm a news junkie if it's something um, yes, that you, do. you need to know i try to share it so please do that. I'm also on Instagram and Twitter. Um, did y'all do? I was just thinking. I just I remember we used to have a little 
classes and you know like all the buses that go to uh, state capitals do y'all have like uh, let elementary school oh yeah i've had plenty of schools come through and do tours i have hosted young people who just wanted to see city government yeah, i have right. them come down on monday and they if they can keep up with me follow me all around city hall and, and be at the council meeting so we do that. We uh, I love that idea. I, you know, because you never know who you inspire. I remember mm -hmm. all of those pictures where you know uh, folks who later ran for office or president or whatever was uh, so, you know you never forget Bill Clinton mm -hmm. iconic picture with him with uh, I think it Robert Kennedy one of them. Right, but, um, and then they and then when they become a council member or a mayor or whatever, right. they say, well, when I was in elementary school, I came, came down, down here. here. Yeah. There you go. So if y'all want to arrange that, call Felicia Morgan's office. Give them the phone number again. Felicia. It's 404-330-6052. 404-330-6052. And tell them when the city council meets and when the council right. committee meets again. So uh, we meet on the, the council, full council meetings are the first and third Mondays of every month. If it's a holiday on a Monday, it's on the Tuesday at 1 p.m. You can come down and speak to us. You can sign up up until the time I hit the gavel. Well, no, up until we start the business because we opened it up during yeah. the proclamation period, which yesterday was about two hours long. So you have plenty of time to sign up and speak. And if you want more time, bring somebody with you and let them yield the time to you. In between the council meetings on the second and fourth are the committees, are the committees. and all seven committees is where you can go. You can speak at the committees, and that's where the work on the legislation and the discussion, a lot of the discussion takes place. If there's a five weeks in the month, we do not meet. All right. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Bowsman. All right. Thank you, TJ, for recording and to keep us on the book of face. And, uh, <laughs> look here, we got to take a break. When we come back, we'll uh, talk a little bit All more right. about the weeping.